All right, here's, I'm here with my uh, Piper Cub S, uh, and as much as I like this aircraft, um, one thing I've always kind of not loved is that it doesn't have any stripes on the bottom of the wings. Uh, the colors are pretty good. I mean, the colors do allow you to see the aircraft pretty well, but I'm just one of those, I, I like having the stripes on the bottom of the wings. So, uh, this wing has already been satin polyed, uh, and so that went well. I thought it did good for the color. You can see it kind of made it just a little shinier. Uh, it makes it resistant to fingerprints. It also makes it cleanable. Uh, if it's hanging, it's been hung for, for, for months, and uh, it gets a little dust on the top of the wings. I was able to just totally wipe the wing off last night, dust it, and it was like back to brand new. Sometimes if you don't have it sat, if you don't have any kind of poly on it at all, when you go to wipe it down, it just sort of mushes everything around and looks bad. But with a little bit of poly, all that dust just wiped right off the wing. So I don't know how this is going to go. I'm going to try to airbrush on this light coat of poly. And then uh, after it dries, I'll actually put another coat of light satin poly over the stripes. And uh, not going to make a big difference, I'm sure, but just adding some stripes to it is going to help see it, uh, you know, help it stand out in the air. Uh, I have found the, it's quite capable. I've gotten this aircraft pretty pretty good height, uh, and, and I think the stripes are just going to boost the visibility just a little. So uh, I'm using this little cup item here uh, for the first time. Usually I use the glass jar. Uh, this is only my second time airbrushing so uh, I think I opened on black already uh, ready spray deep black okay is this open uh, well it's open now so we'll give this a shake um, it's nice these are airbrush paints so uh, you know they're already thin enough to spray pretty well through here Fill this up tall enough to get to the what that intake it should be good. Uh, I think that's what needs to be done. I picked up this little container here. Uh, this is perfect for the airbrush. Sets down in there and all the airbrush accessories. And then all I had to do is just cut out a little spot right here for my Dremel with my Dremel. And then you know this comes out. All right, so uh, let's see how this goes. I think I'm going to prefer the jar, but... Now you can use uh, just a piece of cardboard to uh, as your edger here and not tape th things off necessarily, but I like really dark colors and uh, I like really defined lines. So I'm already not a huge fan of this little cup. Uh, I felt like I wanted to get a little more of an angle, but I didn't want to spill this. Uh, but uh, I've already got the paint in it, so I think I'm kind of stuck with it. Uh, overspray is not a big issue. You can see on this box here, there's just a little tiny bit of overspray. I had the box sitting there, so I went ahead and used it. A uh, little slider airplane in. I was considering taking this wing right off. I just figured, uh, what the heck, I think it'll be fine. So now let's move up to here.
tape is loose. So again, I like really defined lines and kind of th thicker, darker colors, and that's why I've got this taped off. Wow, it's coming out really good, I think. It's really covering. Wow. Um, geez, I don't know if I even really need a second coat here. I think that's pretty good, just the way it is. So I'm gonna hang this up here, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off, and we'll get a look. Yeah. I think it looks really good. That piece of tape was just a little tiny bit loose, so you got some wick in there. Pretty minor. Yeah, I think it looks great. Those are definitely gonna show up uh, in the air. Maybe letting it dry a little could have prevented this. I'll tell you, the other reason why this is probably happening a little bit like this is because I went thick on the paint, and this is polyed. So, um, you can see the line there. So, I taped off right on the seam. So, you'll just barely catch these stripes when you see this. See them from the front. Um... I might not have went far enough over there. Um, but yeah, I think they look uh, they look good. I would just I'm gonna let that one dry a little bit more before I take the paint the tape off. We'll see that might make a little difference. All right, so I'm back with the other side. Hey, one thing that I didn't really even think of when I started this was keeping track of these lines, how you know their distance and how thick they are. So I just grabbed uh, this uh, <clears throat> tool here and uh, I measured those and set these up just like that. So uh, next time I'll probably pick a pattern. Uh, I like, uh, I didn't, I also wanted two stripes on the outside and one on the inside. Um, I think those are too far apart. You know, probably the next time I stripe an airplane wing, I'll probably put them a little bit closer together relative to their size. Um, I like the size compared to the size of the airplane and the stripes. I just, I wish I had put these a little closer together. And I don't want to change it over here. The other thing that I didn't like was I just taped straight across. And so you have this overspray. Like over here and over here. Like it just, in the folds... It just doesn't look great. It doesn't look bad, it's no big deal. But when I taped this second time around, I took, uh, I just took my little Phillips head screwdriver and pushed this down into here so these stripes would come out a little better. Uh, and the other thing was I switched back to the glass jar. Um, I don't like that little metal container because I, I just can't move around the way I like to move around and I'm afraid I'm gonna spill it. And I know I came really close two or three times. So uh, those are just little learning lessons from one set of stripes to the next. You know, putting this down in here and using the glass jar instead. And then uh, using these to measure the distance so that the stripes on this side of the wing match the stripes on the other side. And obviously, you know, I want them to look good. Alright, so unfortunately I got uh, carried away and uh, this is completely done all the stripes on that aircraft are done uh, on, on the carbon cub uh, and they are polyed um, so I just want to go through really super quick what I'm uh, how I'm polying these so you can take a look here you can see it's kind of a matte kind of a blah kind of a chalky look and I'm sure that it can take on fingerprints or can't be wiped off and the color can potentially be um, wiped. So by just applying a little poly, like so, we can protect the stripe 
paint. Oop, see it peeled up a little bit there. This is too wet. All right, so uh, I let a little bit of time go by. It's uh, It's been about an hour and a half. This paint's been drying. So what happened on the last shot was the paint had only been drying for about 15 minutes, and I tried to poly over it. So uh, probably a pretty bad idea, but I tried to do it. Uh, don't do that. If you try to poly over it within 15 minutes of a painting, it smears. So it's been an hour now. Yeah, and no smearing now. Well, two hours. It's been about two hours. So after waiting two hours, you can apply your poly and uh, no issues with smearing. got that covered we'll come back over here this is the one I did last time and I kind of smeared it and so what I did was this is what's kind of nice about black is if you smear it you can just kind of color it in with a black marker so I did that I colored it in with a black marker and uh, now it's polying up nice. Unfortunately, the stuff that smeared earlier onto the yellow is still there, but oh well. It happens. So that is one set of stripes polyed. And that's how I put that poly on. I just go back and make sure that I covered the whole surface. And uh, again, it kind of goes on cloudy and then dries crystal clear. So those two are covered. And I'll just grab this other one. Let me take a look here. Yeah, this hasn't been polyed. So. Of course, this uh, styrofoam has like a porous surface, so helps to kind of brush it and then almost get back a little bit and look down from an angle. And you'll see parts that are covered nicely, and you'll see parts that are just randomly not covered. And so you can kind of swing back and spread the poly a little more. Um, I don't think on black it's as much of a thing. I mean, I do think the stripes will look better with the poly on them. But, um, like, say it were red or yellow, it, or yellow particularly. So when it dries, it takes on, like, a sort of porous, chalky surface. It gets dirty pretty easily. And then it's pretty much, un you can't clean it. So if it were yellow or red... Now, let's just say I decide to hang the airplane, it gets all covered in dust. You know, if it hangs there for four months, it gets some dust on it. You take it down, if it's polyed, you can just wipe it right off. All right, and, and so like my, that carbon cub, that wing is polyed, top and bottom. And so, and it hung in, it hung in my bedroom, I don't know, probably a month and a half and the top of the wing had some dust on it I just wiped it right off no problem so uh, that is definitely another thing that helps out with the poly is uh, or that poly helps with is being able to clean the air clean the surface off after and I do think that it looks better and it helped you know what I mean it does look a little better now this is satin poly again so you know, it's not the shiniest. If you really want that shiny look, like maybe if I was doing a jet or something and I really wanted that shiny look, you know, then maybe I would go for the uh, the gloss. Uh, but this is satin. 
uh, or maybe semi-gloss. Uh, for standard aircraft where I just want it to look good and I want it to be cleanable if I want to clean it, and I just want it to hold up, uh, I think the satin is the way to go. It doesn't particularly stand out, but like, see, here you go. Here's a sticker that's on the top side, and you can see it's kind of chalky. But when you flip it over and you look at the poly side and this stripe, you know, it, it's nice and shiny. It, it's much better looking. And this is what happens when you tape, painters tape over it, and then pull it off. So that's something I'll have to try to avoid in the future. I'll probably come back and touch that back up. Um, on the other wing when I did it, I just held the thing that way. All right, well, the aircraft are all striped and polyed up. Um, there was some good parts. Uh, I definitely learned some stuff here. So this was uh, the point where when I taped off, I didn't go down into the gap between uh, the aileron. Well, actually, this would be the flap, the flap and the wing surface. So you get this kind of sloppy looking thing here. I, I, so then as I move to the other side, I push the tape down in and you can see those surfaces are covered a lot better. Um, down in there, there is some tape, right? And that's what happened here. You got some tape flake going on. But uh, as I said before, the great thing with black is, look at that. We can just cover up down in that crack. Look at that. There was no paint flake down in there. It was perfect right to begin with. All right, well, that's good, cleaned up. Um, the poly is actually still drying. So uh, you can see it's mixed between wet and dry on there. Uh, I would say I learned a lesson here. Don't put masking tape on airbrushed and polyed surface. Um, you know, like, and when I say put it on, I mean press it hard. So as you can see, it pulled off the color over here and there, but on the other side, it didn't do that. And the reason why it didn't do that was because I pressed hard on the tape when it was not on the painted polyed surface. And then where it covered the painted poly surface, I just let it cover it like really easily. I didn't push down on it. So then after I painted it, I waited a few minutes and I pulled it off. I didn't pull off the color over there. So that's something you got to be kind of careful about. Now, the deal with the stripes is I actually screwed them up and uh, they weren't in one wing, didn't have the stripe in the same spot as the other. So my solution was <laughs> I just one stripe was here and one stripe was here on the other wing. I just broadened up that one twice as much. So uh, they're, they're done. Uh, I came out really good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, it. Tips I would say if you're going to do this is uh, definitely give the paint at least a half, I would say at least an hour to dry before you poly over it. Uh, it's got to dry for at least an hour. A little fan helps. Uh, let the paint dry for at least an hour before you poly over it. Uh, and then after you poly over it, obviously don't touch it for a while. Uh, when you tape, push the tape down into the gap that helps keep the lines clean probably number one tip with stripes is have a stripe plan to begin with now I like the stripes to run back to the tail so we can get like a like a whole thing going and it was kind of hard to line up so what I just used this piece of balsa wood to help me line these stripes up that's what I used as my little tool because when it's on the bracket it's just like I don't know I thought this worked good. I lined these up. So I wanted stripes here and I wanted stripes out there. Uh, obviously you're going to want them to be in a pattern. So for the stripes that are further out, you know, pick a one or a two stripe pattern. And if you can, just try to pick like a reference, you know what I mean? Like you definitely don't want to stripe through a point like this. It's just going to, you know, it's just going to get messy. You just avoid it if you can. Uh, avoid these if you can um, but uh, right here you can see on this part I painted right over a sticker that was there that was no problem I mean up close this close I can tell I can see it like maybe I'll do another coat of poly over it and then it will blend right in but uh, I thought it painted up airbrushed painted up just fine 
and now that I've polyed over it, it's not going to wipe away. So uh, those are the stripes airbrushed onto the foam and, and then a little poly coating so that they can't be wiped away. I mean, you can see this one is pretty much dry here. Can't be wiped away. You know, it's staying on there nice and neat. Um, I think it came out good. I think it came out really good. I'm happy with it. Uh, I would say whole process start to finish is going to be about an hour and a half. You know, it takes about 15, 20 minutes altogether to get the thing, the paint, airbrush thing all set up and then well it takes about five minutes but then it takes about 10 15 minutes to run the cleaner through this thing and take it all apart make sure it's clean put it all back together you know you probably don't have to do that every time but this thing works perfectly and i like that so i take it apart every time and clean it and uh, so it works good for me but uh, those are the, the two aircraft I did tonight and, and the stripes that I did. And uh, I made some mistakes and uh, learned some techniques for fixing mistakes. So I'll have to fix this one up too. Uh, hopefully you find that helpful. Uh, hopefully these will help me see these aircraft better in the air. And uh, maybe you can do the same thing and uh, you know help you out, make your aircraft just a little more visible.